Hi, I'm writer-director Jason Byrne. Jay Byrne is what I go by on my movies. Within the past couple of years, I was involved in a movie called You Better Watch Out. Now, you've heard us, if you listen to uh, the podcasts or if you keep up with Roadkill Entertainment, you've heard us talking about You Better Watch Out quite a bit. I also made a movie called Hometown and a documentary called The Final Episode. However, you know, we've been trying to get this movie out there. We've been trying to get people to watch it. There has been a handful of people that have seen it. We've uh, screened it at a film festival. But we decided, you know what? We just want people to see this movie. We want you, the fans, anybody who's interested in watching it, to be able to see it. So, at least for the foreseeable future, until January 1st, You Better Watch Out is available to watch for free on you, on the YouTube channel, the Roadkill Entertainment YouTube channel. Easiest way to find it, if you want to check out You Better Watch Out, and this is free, no subscription, no nothing required to watch this movie. You can go on YouTube, you can watch it. If you have a Roku device, literally all you need to type into the Roku device, the search bar for, for your YouTube app on the Roku device is Roadkill Entertainment, You Better Watch Out. It, so it's, it's, it's R E Y. B W O. So R E Y B W O. Just put that into the the you know the little search bar and you're all set. And you can watch, you better watch out for free. If you're on a, a regular computer, you can go to YouTube, just put the little um uh, hashtag symbol and R E Y B W O and you can watch You Better Watch Out for free. You can also see uh, Hometown, the final episode, and um, uh, an old anthology I call, I, I mean, called VHS. Basically, everything that's available through Roadkill Entertainment is for free to watch on our YouTube channel right now. So, from uh, Michael Welch and myself, we put a lot of love and a lot of heart into this movie, and we love it, and we hope people, will, our fans of ours, love it. So, please, check out You Better Watch Out. Please check out our movie and let us know what you think. Thanks. Welcome to episode 17 of Roadkill Entertainment's Video Village Podcast. I am here with my buddy... Michael Welch. Again. And this is... Well, I, actually, this is pretty, your name? pretty regular. What? What's your name? Did you, you didn't say <laughs> Oh, yeah. Name? I'm Jay Byrne. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I'm Jason Jay Byrne. Um, and... Um, We'll get this out of the way right away. If you hear a screaming child in the background, I just, uh, my three weeks old, a newborn, so she's constantly screaming. No worry. My, my wife has her. I'm not just leaving her in the other room and letting her scream. DSS, I'm serious. <laughs> no. But, uh, yeah. But, yeah, so me and Mike are, uh, are, are locked in another room tonight recording, but uh, that's okay. Not that you would know the difference, because you have no idea where we record this from anyway. We could be recording this in a dingy basement, in a we're cemetery, in, in a... We're in a bunker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're just... Uh, but, yes. So, um, today's episode is going to be our Christmas episode. Christmas, yay! I sound like Kermit. Yay! Dude, well, that's good. I'm sure we'll... Yeah, there we go. Sure well, that's we'll some Kermit. Yes, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to get into that in a little bit, um, and we're just going to be talking about everything christmas christmas horror movies christmas whatever christmas tv shows it'll just be a all-out christmas conversation which would be kind of fun but um yeah before we get started mike have you seen anything new that you'd like to talk about recently i've seen a lot of poopy diapers and yeah, I, I, <laughs> and uh i've been watching a lot of christmas things i've been hmm. uh, you know we, we just talked before we started filming i watched losing it which isn't a new thing for me, but it's it was a blast from the past. And yeah, but it's if, a great movie. Yeah, if you haven't checked out Losing It, you should check it out. With Tom Cruise, an Tom early, Cruise. Perf- a very early performance by Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's like what? It's eighty two. So, I think that's before right. Risky Business. I think it might even be before Risky Business, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, because he was the you know kind of the dorky virgin in it, and you know all the other guys had more experience. Yeah, yeah. That that was gonna change. That's funny. Yeah, because right, because um. Because in Risky Business, he's, like, the main focus. So, 
you, you could almost imagine somebody saw him in one of his other movies and said, this guy can hold a movie. You know what I mean? Because, right. like, I don't know. It's just he's the main character in Risky Business. Whereas he's part of an ensemble and losing it, really. Right, right. Because it's all the characters. And Shelley Long, which is cool. Yeah. I, I, I had this weird crush on Shelley Long back in the day. Me I don't too. know why. Me I don't too. know what it was. I just I yeah. had a thing for Shelley Long when I was a kid. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> From oh. Cheers and whatnot. But yes. Man, you know what? We, we kind of talked about this before, but we haven't talked about it on this. Uh, I saw The Perfect Host. Ooh. The Perfect Host. What I still got to watch that, yeah. Oh, you... yeah. What a great film. What a so I won't spoil anything because yes. you could spoil it really easy. Okay, but uh, but twists like crazy. Uh, you think like if you watch the trailer, you think you know what the movie's about, and you still want to see it. You go, that's cool, and then it goes in so many other places. And so if you haven't checked out Perfect Host with David Hyde Pierce, that's right, it's David Hyde Pierce. I was yeah. just gonna say who's uh, I forgot who was in that. Actually. Yeah, was, um, that's awesome. Magnet put it out, so cool. Check, check it out. It's a great film. Cool. I um uh, let's see. I picked up a couple of things, so I'll I'll give a quick little review of um, I got the Scream Factory's Tales from the Crypt and uh, Vault of Horror double feature, which is awesome, which is very fitting for us because I don't know those movies are very influential <laughs> into the movies that we made. Right. <laughs> Hometown and you better watch out. But um, the disc looks great; it's awesome. What's actually kind of cool about it is is um, I mean they're both like as far as the quality is of the movies are concerned, they're they look better than they ever have before, but like. You know, these aren't the type of movies that are going to look, like, in incredibly amazing. Like, these old British horror movies all kind of have a little bit of a rough look to them anyway. That's kind of like the charm of the movies, too. Right. It kind of adds to the look of it. But actually, Tales from the Crypt looks really good. Uh, Vault of Horror, which is kind of cool, is Scream Factory actually hunted down the, um, the R-rated cut of the movie. Because I guess the version that we had existed before that uh, came out on MGM... It was like an MGM double feature, like uh, the Midnight Movies ones that they had there. Because yeah, yeah. I had that for, like, ever... Vault of Horror was a PG cut. I guess in the United States it got released in, in a PG cut. And it has these weird freeze frames, like where the violence happens, where it's like part of the picture is cut out. Like it's weird. It looks like a like weird like matte like cut and paste jobs. They included both versions actually. Actually there's three versions of Vault of Horror, which is really weird. Like it's, it's a little overkill actually because there's the, R, the real regular cut, which is the original British theatrical cut, which is the R-rated cut, the un uncut basically and then there's the theatrical cut from the united states which was the pg version that had been released prior then there's an open mat like full frame version of the r-rated cut i don't even i don't know what possessed them to do the full frame version of it just maybe because they found it and they thought i oh, don't what the hell put it on here I, I don't really i mean it's a theatrical film so there's really no reason i mean it doesn't have to be seen full frame it wasn't made for tv or anything like that yeah. just kind of random other than that though there's like really no bonus features there's trailers and that's it there's like nothing on it but i mean they're great movies and it, it's it they did them as a double feature so you get both movies in the set which is kind of cool um so yes uh so that's the, oh uh, funny um one in in our movie which i'm sure we'll mention at some point you uh, you better watch out because we're talking about christmas stuff um there's a shot of uh, there's a section where there's a dead bird on the on the ground, and I didn't have a the, I didn't have a proper shot for that. So remember, I used the still frame, and I always said that's my little homage to Vault of Hara because the PG cut has these really weird still frames that just come on the screen, and it looks like that. It just all of a sudden like a still picture on the screen. It just seems odd. So so I like to go around saying that's all my homage to the uh, the uh, <laughs> the PG cut of uh, Vault of Hara, but uh, yeah. I mean, that's going a little too far, but uh, I also got uh, um, from Vinegar Syndrome, I got uh, Christmas Evil. Oh, you did get that. Yes. I didn't know if I had shown you that. No, I no. Um, I got Christmas Evil, and that's pretty cool, actually. That That's the um, the director's cut. You better watch out. I know. I know. And it says it on the movie. which it, the, the, That's the alternate even, title for the movie Christmas Evil. Point. Yeah. And you know what's <laughs> weird about the exclamation point? Okay. This is very strange, okay? Now... Now, obviously, I mean, I'm sure he didn't do it on purpose or anything like that, and I don't even know who did the artwork for the front. But um, the guy who runs Vinegar Syndrome is a friend of uh, is a friend of mine. Some guy, well, he works with people who run Vinegar Syndrome. This guy named Joe Rubin, and he knows my movie, and they know our movie because they've seen it, right? Well, the title card on Christmas Evil that says you better watch out does not have an exclamation point at the end. And when I saw this box, I saw the exclamation point. I'm like. Did that was just that force of habit because he's seen my box like and it just kind of came to his mind. That's weird, isn't it? Maybe it's maybe in some of the artwork it had the thing after. I don't know, but it never played 
as you better watch out right theatrically that's why i wasn't too we weren't too worried about it because it's literally just an alternate title for a director's cut that like never got released but the it, it was released as christmas evil so but no this is this is great this is um it's like a, it's like a new 4k restoration it looks awesome it has all the bonus features that were on the trauma and the synapse version so it's like it's packed this is like the version to have it has like everything on it and actually i think it even comes with a dvd doesn't it yeah yeah it's dvd and blu-ray double feature so it's a good set interesting cover I don't know who did the artwork or where they got this artwork from because this is definitely not original artwork for it. It's like this weird drawn picture of Santa. I don't know who did the artwork. Maybe they were trying to do something a la like Scream Factory and they had somebody they knew did. I don't know. I don't know where that came from. But um, the, the greatest Christmas movie ever made, John Waters. Right. That's, that's, a, that's, that, all you need. that's all you need to know right there. Uh, <laughs> and that fits in with our topic. Yeah, there we go. And do I have anything else here? Oh, um, I'll, I'll just do these quick. I also got these i've had these for a little while um I, I didn't talk about these i don't know if you i, I think i told you i saw jersey boys which you was good that, yeah. the clint eastwood movie jersey boys i actually liked it some people have issues with it um the dvd looks good i mean modern movies look good anyway on blu-ray i mean you, you almost you, it's, it's, it's it's almost like pointless to review the quality of a modern digital transfer because they all look the same they right. all look clear you know um and i i got this too uhf uh nice. with um with uh, yankovic uhf uh, shout factory put it out this is cool because it has a, uh, it has this Comic Con panel. I guess it's a, it's it's a, like an hour long Comic Con panel where they like talk about his career and it's pretty funny actually. Mm. It's some funny stuff. I don't know, have you seen have you seen this movie in a while? No, 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 not in a while. Yeah, this is just one of those random little movies that I was wondering if it would hold up and it does. It holds up pretty good. Like you, you kind of can't look at it as a skit film. When I was a kid, I used to look at it as a skit film, and it's a skit film with a plot. So there's some funny skits in it. It's not like an Amazon Women on the Moon or like, you know what I mean? Or like, or a Kentucky Fried movie, like, yeah. which I love that movie. Um, it's more of a movie that has a few skits in it, you know? So when I was a kid, I think I watched it wanting just all skits. And then I was kind of like, eh, that's a plot. <laughs> what's, what's this? Although Weird Al himself said, like, when they were coming up with the plot, that he's like, well, we just needed something to tie all the skits together. <laughs> so, see? I, I, yeah, I was, I was kind of right. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's the ones that I've gotten so far that I can think of. Oh, and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which is a great movie. Right. I have some other stuff which I haven't watched yet. Um, I, I Guardians of the Galaxy, I picked that up. And, of course, that looks good that looks great because it's a new freaking action marvel movie mm-hmm. yeah i you know okay i'm gonna have like a uh my, my initial impression of guardians of the galaxy which i enjoyed the movie i didn't think it was anything much m- m- any more special than any of the other marvel movies except for a little bit of the humor i didn't think it like because a lot of people were thinking it was like amazing and great and stuff and i was like well it's okay it's a marvel movie it, it felt to me when i watched it I'm like okay it feels like a marvel movie but it has some humor in it which which actually i think made it stand out a little bit i liked it more watching it again this time but the funny part about it is there's a section of the movie where it turns into what the typical marvel movie things do when it becomes like the big fight for the end of the world basically you know and it goes on for like 20 minutes and i'm like that's the section of the movie to me when i watch it where i'm like okay I actually kind of like the other parts of the movie better. Like, I like the character-driven stuff better. It's it's like, you know, I don't know if that makes any sense. I know you've seen it, so any any opinions on uh, on that at all? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, it definitely the humor separates it um, because it's, there's more humor mm-hmm. and there's, there's very, you know, wise-ass characters where... You know, the other films don't because they have to be heroes and they're... Right, so, and you it's, know, so that's, it's more straight, yeah. Right. You know, and it's really, it's really a, a bunch of assholes that get together and you know become heroes. And, <laughs> really, know, yeah, they are a bunch of like asshole characters. Yeah. None of them are really particularly, I guess you would say, likable right. people. They're, like they're, they're not the Avengers. No, they're not the Avengers at all. Actually, it's funny that I, it's uh, you say that because I, like I said to Katie, and I think I told you this when we talked about it a while ago when it first came out, um, not in the show, but just you know, just as friends talking about the movie. Um, the movie Serenity, the Joss Whedon movie Serenity, which I almost feel like it's a different version of the same thing. And I almost think, I mean, I'm a big Joss Whedon fan, so maybe I'm biased, but from a cinematic point of view, I almost think Serenity gets it better, gets it a little bit better than Guardians of the Galaxy, but nobody paid attention to Serenity. That's the thing. Like, the characters are better. and, and, and uh, But then again, it was also based on a TV show that had, like, 13 episodes of character development. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Maybe that has something to do with it. 
But you saw Serenity. You like Serenity. I yeah, think you showed me Serenity. That yeah. was pretty cool. That, I think that one's more along the Star Wars route. That feels like it feels like a Star Wars movie to me, like with those characters. You know what I mean? But um, oh yeah. And what did you think? You uh, uh, speaking of Star Wars, do love, you, love the trailer. Do you see the trailer so far? Yeah, yeah. the trailer's pretty cool. I, at first, I wasn't sure if that was even the real thing because it was so many like fake things floating around. I'm like, is this the real trailer or not? But um, yeah, there were a lot of fakes. They, you know, people were like making an issue about. Like a black stormtrooper. Did you did did you read there was people online making an issue about a black stormtrooper? I'm like, why? What what is there something wrong with having a black stormtrooper? Right. Does, I I didn't get that. I'm like that seemed really racist. I'm like this yeah. is just like a bunch of like, <laughs> what Absolutely. does this mean? <laughs> I don't know. I just saw a lot of like like shit over a black storm that and the uh the little the, there's a like, robot thing yeah, rolling. The rolling robot, but you know the what's funny saber. about the rolling robot thing? That's I think that's a bad robot logo. I, I didn't really check it and double check it afterwards, but the, the bad robot logo, J.J. Abrams logo that comes up on like Lost and all the shows and everything, and actually it's on these movies too. There's a little robot that comes through the field and it like rolls up. I'm like, I think that's the robot from the bad robot logo. So it's almost like his way of putting his little character yeah. into the Star Wars. You know? So that's kind of cool. I mean, I don't know what the character plays as far as the story. Though they they teased us with the Millennium Falcon, but we didn't get any shots of like Han, Luke, no, or Leia. No. I kind of figured they. I'm like they're not gonna show us. You're not gonna see them. I mean, just one shot. I wanted to see like Han Solo in the cockpit of like the Millennium Falcon, and that would have been like the trailer shot. Like people would have been posting screen caps of that all over the place. But I watched this little video. It was fake, but it was like a like a, almost like a funny or die video. I don't know if you've seen this or not. It's it's supposed to be like a Star Wars geek watching the trailer for the first time. It's hilarious. You can I, I don't know what it's called, but like if you I, I'm sure if you looked up like Star Wars geek watching trailer for the first time, it would be the one thing that came up because it's like it's a sort of a professionally made video, and the guy's hilarious because he's like watching the video and every, everything. He's like, oh my god! Oh my! Oh my god! Oh my god! And it, it seems real at first, right? And then when. <laughs> And then when the Millennium Falcon comes up, he goes, holy shit, like slams his hands up, gets up, and he goes, that's the Millennium Falcon. And then, then he starts walking around his room and he goes, I can't fucking believe it. And he's ripping everything off his walls and trashing the room. He's like breaking posters. He's like, this is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. I was like, what is this? It's hilarious. Like, I don't know. It's a weird video. It popped up on Facebook. Somebody posted it. But um, yeah. But all right, that's enough. I, unless, Mike, you have anything to say about Star Wars. There's not much to say about it yet. Anyway, no, I love man. the trailer. If everybody who's hating on it should stop hating on it because it's a fucking lightsaber with, with the uh, extra blades coming out. Yeah, really. They made a big deal out of that, too. The stupid the, extra light. The who cares? You know, that's, you know, it's, go, go watch. Go, it looks cool. Go watch, <laughs> it's, go watch Lord of the Rings. That's how those things right. are back then. You know? Right, exactly. I mean, it's it's... It's a cool, it's just a cool effect, you know what I mean? When right. you, it's what I find hilarious about like the whole Star Wars culture, and not to get like really big into this right now, but it's like you get it with the Star Trek culture as well. But they're so detail oriented with like the mythology of like the movies and the books and all the comics and all that stuff that's been going on for like ever that if something doesn't seem like it could fit and if something seems different, they go out, they're like up in arms. It's like, it's crazy. You know what? That stupid sword, that stupid lightsaber, they, it, it comes down to a, basically this. Oh, hey, it would look cool if the lights came out the side, didn't it? Oh, hey, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> Who? That's it. Right. That's what the filmmakers and the writers do. They go, hey, that looks pretty cool. Like, that's yeah, it. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, that's, that lightsaber is not Jar Jar. No. You, you know, you don't have reason to hate the lightsaber. No. You know? And so far, I mean, it looks like, to me, it looks like... It was in good. It's in good hands. It like yeah. the the shots that that they showed that we've seen so far, look like they really tried to make it look like the old movies. I mean, you got like Tatooine at the beginning. You've got like I mean, it lo really looks. And then when you see the Falcon at the end, you're like, okay, this is fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Like it, it really looks like Star Wars. So this is awesome. But yeah, okay. So en enough Star Wars. I'm not gonna go on Star Wars forever. But uh, all right, I guess we'll um get started. Do you have anything else you want to talk about before we get going, Mike, or yeah, we can get into our subject? All right. Christmas movies. I guess let, we'll start with well, because there's not as many to go through. We'll do, we'll do our horror movies first, and then we can go into like you know TV specials and like cool. um, we'll get get the horror out of the way because it really isn't that much. Well, we talked about Christmas Evil. That was what we I just was talking about the Blu-ray uh, of Christmas Evil. That movie I bought actually. Let's see. All right, Christmas Evil, which is kind of nice. We're in a different room, so I have. <laughs> you can hear the typing. I have a uh, I have a computer next to me, so I can you know. Give you the details at least, so that does that don't sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, you better watch out, original title. I, that kills me. <laughs> but, um, 
Oh, no exclamation no point. Exclamation point. Um, anyway, Christmas Evil was 1980. It was directed by a guy named Louis Jackson. Um, and it stars Brendan Maggart, who is Fiona Apple's dad. Did really? you know that? No. no, you didn't know that. That's Fiona Apple's dad. He um he had a really small career as a uh, as an actor. As a matter of fact, he's not in very many movies at all. Well, no, he's a, he's a lot of TV. I guess he did more than I thought. I'm not gonna go through his whole thing, but yeah, he, a lot of TV. And he's in Dress to Kill as well. That movie. The the oh, so all right. So well, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm like he's not that many movies. He's in tons of TV. He's in World According to Garp. Really? Okay, I like that movie. But all right. But yeah, he was um just an actor, and, you know, and he did a bunch of movies and stuff like that from the time. But it was really he, he's a great actor. I think it's like definitely from what I've seen. I, I mean, it's a great role for somebody to play. It's a weird movie because a lot of people don't know. Christmas Evil, mm. and I mean, we'll we'll get into Silent Night, Deadly Night as well. But like, people know Silent Night, Deadly Night over Christmas Evil. Sure. But I think Christmas Evil is almost like a lost gem, because it's not a slasher movie. It's a fucked up psychological movie that just like goes crazy at the end. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. What do you right. any thoughts I, on Christmas Evil, Mike? No, I mean, I, I really dig it. It's I'm glad that it's out because I, uh, you know, I haven't seen it in years either. Um, <sighs> just because I, you know, I haven't had it. I haven't tracked it down kind of thing right right so i'm i'm really excited for the the release i mean i know when we were making our movie we were you know we we even we were banking on the ah oh, nobody remembers you better watch out for right because it was you know it was the overseas title or spanish title or right right and nobody knew so what the like, hell it was nah, and nobody knows that movie and then here it is and the funny thing about it is is it wasn't like when we when we came up with the title for you better watch out it wasn't like we were thinking christmas evil at all my wife katie was the one who threw it out and she then and then we thought, oh, that's kind of cool and we kind of went with that like, it wasn't until after that I realized, oh, crap, that's actually, like, the, alt, yeah, yeah, the we'd, ultimate we'd already, title for Christmas Evil. <laughs> we had already named it. We had already put out a, a, a teaser poster. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then we realized, oh, oh, well, um, okay, whatever. Guess we're going with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, you know what? Nobody said anything to us so far. That's I don't right. think it's a that's problem. Right. I, I really don't. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, no, Christmas Evil is an awesome movie. It's uh, basically about this guy who... Like, basically thinks he's Santa Claus. It's like an unstable dude who just, like, thinks... He loves Christmas so much that he pretty much acts as Santa Claus. He has, like, a naughty and nice book. Actually, what's so funny about it is, is he does all the traditional tropes of Santa Claus. But watching a, just a normal, everyday dude do it seems really creepy. Like, he's on the roof with binoculars watching little kids and seeing if they're, they're being good or bad and stuff. And it just seems wrong. <laughs> it's just like a, some weird, like, taxi driver mentality... Mm -hmm towards santa claus very much so actually that's a that's a really good comparison it's like a taxi driver version of, of, of santa claus <laughs> it really, that's exactly what it is right down to i mean well whatever i mean uh, without giving i mean whatever if you're listening to the christmas thing now you're probably not gonna have a chance to watch christmas evil right now anyway and if you watch it next year you spoiler alert so spoilers ahead. spoilers ahead right down to the last shot in the movie when like the truck, his truck flies away, and he is Santa Claus. I'm like, and he, the truck flies away by the, and it's like, what? <laughs> That's the craziest, most batshit ending for that movie. Like, he goes around killing a bunch of people, but not intentionally. He kills a few people that kind of get in his way and try to stop him, or people that he deemed bad that did bad things. Right. But then he's good to like the kids yeah, and stuff like that. He actually super... shows up like an orphanage and like gives the kids toys and everything. Yeah. It's weird because the movie rides the line between like sweet Christmas story and twisted like psychodrama. It's a strange movie. He's, he's a vigilante. It's, it's, it's like Death Wish or something. It is. Yeah. Yeah, totally. But yeah, I mean, Christmas Evil is awesome. Christmas Evil is definitely worth checking out. And uh, Vinegar Syndrome uh, just put out a brand new Blu-ray of it. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if they also sell it as just a DVD only, but it does come DVD and Blu-ray in the package. So you, you can find it now. I mean, obviously, you'd have to go on like Amazon or something like that in order because most stores don't carry it. I, and a movie stop might carry it. Like if you have a movie stop in your area, sometimes they have some of the Vinegar Syndrome stuff. Mm. Yeah, it's it's iffy whether they yeah. carry it or they don't. I mean, but. Yeah, my, my company has some vin Vinegar Syndrome. Do you guys? I haven't seen that yet. No, you guys carry, you, you guys have like um a lot of the, oddly enough, the softcore stuff. Yeah, we do. You like the double features with like the yeah. softcore porns and stuff on yeah. them. Like, but um. Okay, so Christmas Evil, good movie. <laughs> we like Christmas Evil. We okay, do. we'll uh, okay going forward with the horror movies. Of course, we're going to talk about the granddaddy of them all, the one that everybody loves, and it actually just got a reissue last year in the movie theater. It was a very limited reissue, but it was a reissue nonetheless. Silent Night, Deadly Night, nineteen eighty four. Silent Night, Deadly Night, actually. 
But uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think of Silent Night, Deadly Night, Mike? Love Silent Night, Deadly Night. <laughs> what did you think I, of the remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night? That's I also question. liked the remake very Me too. much. I, I did, yes. actually. I, I did like the remake. I, I didn't find... I don't know. Some people don't like it, but I don't... It's a, I mean, you know, obviously I, I'm going to like it right off because it's a Malcolm McDowell movie. But Oh yeah, that's right. I forget. I, I don't like every movie he's in. I just like him in every movie. There you go. So, you know, he's done some shit movies, but he was great. In <laughs> but this is a movie he's great in, and the movie's good, too. Right. No, actually, it is a great movie. Yeah. Um, and, um, and very different than the original. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah the, the remake is like, it's almost not a remake. Yeah. Like, it's it's kind of like just a different story. Like, but it's a Santa slasher, basically. Yeah. And I, it was filmed really cool. Like, I thought the remake had a lot of, like, cool gels and stuff. Like, they just filmed, they had, they had that 80s horror movie style. They really kind of nailed that 80s slasher style with it, I right. thought. But, um, yeah, about the original um, uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. I said 1984, directed by a guy named Charles E. Sellier Jr., which is funny. This guy, his, um, he's, he's known for... What else does he know for? Does anything come up as a director? Yeah. He did a lot of TV as well, this guy, I, from, what I, from what I've read. Look, yeah, see? Documentary producers. Shows from the... Um, the Amazing World of Psychic Phenomenon. These are like those those weird TV shows from the 70s. You know what I mean? So he's more of a producer. Than yeah, The Life and Times of Grizzly Adams. He was a producer on that. Like, yeah, it's weird. He has a very, like, odd, like, career. Like, just producer of, like, TV shows and stuff in the 70s. He was a TV producer. Basically, he was like, um... Oh, I can't think of the guy's name. But, um... Norman Lear. Norman Lear. He was like a Norman Lear back in the day. Yeah, right, back in the 70s. There you go. That was a good... Uh, good. <laughs> you saved me on that one. Um, he was like a Norman Lear, basically, and who did shows back in the 70s. And he got offered the chance to do a movie because I, I remember listening to this... Um, uh, it was a podcast or a comment. No, there's a commentary on the new disc, which wasn't on the first disc, actually, which is, but the new Blu-ray disc is actually also kind of weird because it's, I think it's just an upconvert of a standard definition yeah. source. But it does... <laughs> And this isn't like me saying this just because like I have the blue right now and I have to live with it. Um, it really does look cleaner than the DVD does. Like it doesn't look like a DVD when you're watching it, but it doesn't look like film either. It looks like this weird digital anomaly that you're kind of like, okay, well, it looks pretty clear, but that's definitely not like high definition. Like there's a lot of detail loss and they had to use because the movie when the movie was released in the movie theater, um, it was an R-rated theatrical cut. And when it came out on home video, for whatever reason, they inserted all this extra gore into it, which wasn't in the version that played in the theater. So people saw it in the movie theater back in the day. It wasn't in the original theatrical cut of it. Um, and when they did the reissue, uh, Fangoria did a reissue like uh, two years, about, about two years ago. Um, me and my wife, Katie, went to go see it. And they screened the R-rated cut because they got it from a print, like an old print. Actually, they screened it off of Blu-ray, which is funny because they had to send the Blu-ray around to the theaters. And it was, it was in HD off of a Blu-ray. But... That didn't look that great either. I mean, that was a beat up print. It looked like an old, like grindhousey print, mm. like to it. So, it's almost like when they went to do the Blu-ray, they were like, "Well, we don't have anything, <laughs> so let's just use our old." Because the old transfer actually did kind of look better than the, what I saw in the theater. But, um, but yeah. So oh, I, got, I got a little off track there. But um, the extra footage was just put on the home video version. So, like for years, like I grew up thinking that was the version of the movie that you know was supposed to be seen, but apparently that was a that was a longer cut of the movie than originally. So now, when it gets put out, people are expecting that extra gore footage in the movie. So what they basically did, Anchor Bay basically did, is it's the only version of that footage they have is from the master of that VHS tape from the '80s. Wow. So when you watch it, it's like it's rough. Like, it's like you've got, like, you know, a film print which looks halfway decent, which is still up converted to HD. But then you've got VHS footage up converted to HD. So it gets really kind of weird when the when it goes into, like, the crap, like, the, uh, the, the uncut stuff. And the way that they cut it, too, they didn't just splice in the uncut stuff. They did it, like, they found, like, key points where to kind of let that footage play out. So I guess it wouldn't seem so cutty. So certain sections of the movies, actually, some of that stuff is actually in the R-rated cut, and they could have had a better quality print running that footage, but they just used, I don't know, it's a weird release. It's a sketchy release, but it's the only way you can get that movie. So there's a double feature, too, that's been around DVD for a while now that has Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, which that that movie uh there's not even that much to say about that movie garbage but garbage day garbage day that movie has it's like has a massive fan base like i, I it, love it it's a hilarious 
what's great about that movie <laughs> is the, the the footage that's not flashback <laughs> is good. Half of the movie is flashbacks from the first film. <laughs> right. So, but I read they also said the reason why they did that was that nobody had seen you for uh, Silent Night the Night because it got pulled from theaters like a week after it was released mm. because of all the, like the the, the the mothers groups that were you know that went after it. This, there was this whole thing where it got banned in the eighties. Basically, it didn't get banned, but TriStar pulled it from the theaters. Most likely, from what I've heard from the directors themselves in the audio commentary and on some interview that I listened to. Because of the fact that uh, they were a TriStar was associated with a certain company, that um, oh TriStar had something to do with Nestle, I think. I think it was no oh no Coca Cola. TriStar had something to do with Coca Cola, and Coca Cola had a problem with the Santa Claus because Coca Cola's Santa Claus image is a big deal to them, mm-hmm. and TriStar was associated with them. They basically said you got to pull this movie from the theater because we don't want it to affect the sales of our coca-cola santa products and we don't want it to fuck anything up so Uh. that's why that's actually because that's what the film the producer of the film actually says that's most likely the reason why the movie guy because even he doesn't really know why it got pulled tristar just pulled it from the theater like a week after it came out and everyone went after it but silent night deadly night is a great fucking movie like the original silent deadly night is a twisted i mean it's just i don't know it's that movie functions on a level of exploitation filth that, like, very few movies go there. Like, <laughs> and and you know, as as kids of the late seventies and eighties, it's so great to watch it now and see all those toys that we had. I know on the shelf. I know because he works in the toy store, and this. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy all the toys in the background that yeah. you see. It's like GI Joe and I know. Man and Star Wars, and it's weird because they're all brand new toys. Yeah. And what's so strange about that is with the with the collector's market on toys right now, like a lot of that stuff gets trashed when he's like chasing around killing people. This stuff <laughs> right. gets knocked off shelves. It's brand new. So so you can imagine like the the you know the the the, the super geek collectors in their basements <laughs> like they go, who keep everything in the box. They're like they're like freaking. Oh my god, you destroyed us. <laughs> you know, but no. But uh, no, I love Silent Night, Daily Night. That's a great movie. There's a ton of sequels to Silent Night, Daily Night, which I'm not going to go into all the sequels, but actually there's five of them. There's Silent Night, Daily Night 1, 2, there's 3, 4, and 5. And to varying degrees there, I don't know, have you yeah, ever I mean, seen any of them? No. I, I love part three just because Bill Mosley's in it. But Yeah, Bill Mosley's in it, right. But it, it I mean, wow, Is that the one with Clint Howard crazy. as well? No, that's like that's four, like four. I think. I think. Yeah. yeah, I don't know too yeah. much about all the sequels. Yeah. I have them. I've watched them like once. Yeah. They're they were direct to video kind of like cash in movies back in the eighties. Yeah, back when like every like every sort of popular horror series had to have like seven direct to video sequels. Amityville Horror Amityville did. There's like a million of those. Amityville Dollhouse, Amityville The Evil Escapes, like like and actually some of those are pretty good, but like there's a million of them. Like so you know, I'm a big sequel person as far as eighties franchises go, but sometimes I just have to stop. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I have to stop myself and be like, eh, it's all right. Eh, whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have them for collector's purposes, <laughs> but, uh, I'm not going to suggest to go run out and buy Silent Night, Night 3, but it did come out on DVD in a three pack. It's with three, four, yeah, and five. Yeah. I don't know if you can still find it, but it was out a couple years ago and that's the version that I got. Yeah. But, um, all right, so that was those are like the main two Christmas horror movies, basically. Um, let's see, there's uh, any other Christmas horror movies that I mean, there's others, of course. Well, there's ours. I I, I don't know. Well, of course. I guess we can talk about. It's a good a good play. We're doing the Christmas horror movies. We'll bring up ours. We uh we a movie called we made called You Better Watch Out, which is a uh, holiday anthology. Um, because there's a Christmas story, a Halloween story, a Thanksgiving story, and a New Year's story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I did. We did make that movie. I'm like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> what is? <laughs> but I don't know. I think we did a good job. I know ours. It's it's it was ours is very inspired by oddly enough, like Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror, with the wraparound story that that each in each person tells their story. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I I think I probably talked about it before. There's not too much to say yeah, about it, but right. watch it. it. It's all it's up there for free right now. <laughs> it's, it's Christmas. I play Santa. Mike plays Santa, which is which, which is nuts because then Mike lost a ton of weight and now you're skinny, I so you can't now really I can't play Santa, you yeah. can't really be Santa anymore. Well, you'd have to pad yourself up. It probably it wouldn't look as authentic. Right, right. You know, <laughs> no, it wouldn't. But but yeah, like Jay said, you can watch it for free right now and through the end of the year mm. on our uh, our YouTube channel. 
It's got some hits. Yeah, We're creeping up uh, on about three hundred hits, which is probably nothing to most people, but to us, well, it's kind of nice. It's great. It's, what, what is it? Is it? Is it Roadkill Entertainment? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Roadkill Entertainment YouTube? on. Um, yeah, in, in the you can actually you can go to the website, and the website will link you to it too. jburn 75wixcom slash Roadkill Entertainment. I'm glad you That's, remember that. Uh, I'm, Are you I'm kind of staring at it right now. <laughs> it's on the card right in front of me. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I always say it at the end of the shows. So I'm kind of like trying to remember it all the time. Yeah, I don't remember that. It's just so weird. It's it's like it's like dot org dot slash that so that you know people like what probably why don't you just get a domain name why pay for something when i can get a website for free <laughs> that's, that's the uh, that's, art of independent filmmaking independent it's filmmaking. free <laughs> what do i need an ex- need to pay for a site for because you're too goddamn lazy to type in an address <laughs> all right anyway all right so i mean basically I mean, there's a, there's a there's a there's a slew of other ones. So there's a movie called Don't Open Till Christmas, which I've never seen. That's a horror, Christmas horror movie, which is kind of like an exploitation movie, which I hear is pretty good. Um, another Christmas horror movie, actually one that I have seen, is uh, To All a Good Night that David has directed. Oh, you did see that? Yes. Oh, I want to see that. Not a bad movie. Um, I used to like it when I was younger. I haven't seen it in years. Actually, um, a company called Kino just put it out on Blu-ray, and the Blu-ray looks kind of nice, actually. But um, yeah. <laughs> you know I, I knew David Hess personally through some friends and stuff like that and he was a great guy don't get me wrong but I don't know if I, I maybe I mean I, don't, I guess this is what he wanted to do with the movie because the acting is horrible yeah. like it's 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 subpar like slasher movie level like to the point where like like my wife Katie can she loves like cheapo cheesy slashers like we watch them and i don't know it's the weirdest thing if, we, if i put in like this really down and dirty like shitty slasher movie from the 80s she ends up freaking loving it she got bored to shit halfway through the movie she's like this movie sucks <laughs> i'm like wow well, really i'm like oh sorry david <laughs> but um i it's, it's not a bad movie it's it, i mean if you're a completist and you want to see all these movies from the 80s there is a santa killer in the movie but it's really just somebody dressing up as santa claus that's in it's about a bunch of girls in a um uh, it's like a dormitory for girls or something like that kind of and they end up staying there over the weekend when everybody else, it's kind of like house on sorority row it's almost the same type of plot where they end up staying like through the holiday season and they're the only ones in there with like the lady who runs the place or something like that and yeah and people are getting killed off so it's like black Christmassy kind of too yeah, actually, it's almost the same exact plot. Actually, the plot is totally derivative of like everything else that came out around that time. But it has some cool stuff. It has a cool ending. And there's just some imagery associated with the movie. that I'm, I'm so used to the old video box for that, that. It's almost like classic for those reasons more than for the movie itself. You know what I mean? But it came out on Blu-ray. So, and it's got Jennifer Runyon in it, who was in Up the Creek. Um, and um, oh, she's in a ton of stuff. If you... Uh, you, I don't know. Do, does the name sound familiar to you, Mike? Jennifer. The, the name sounds familiar. I am going to show you a picture of Jennifer Runyon, and you are going to be like, "Oh, okay, here she is." Oh, Ghostbusters. She's the girl at the beginning of Ghostbusters. Oh, the that does the psychic thing. Yeah, the, no with worry, the, she's okay. in a bunch of stuff. She's in she's in the movie, and um, she she's in a bunch of movies actually. Uh, let's see. She's a lot of TV apparently. Oh, Charles in Charge. She was in Ghost. Yeah. Oh, she was in Charles in Charge yeah, too. Yeah, she was the. Yeah. That's right. All right, when I, her movies basically, she was in Ghostbusters. She's in The Falcon and the Snowman, I guess, somewhere. I, I don't remember that movie too well, but she's in it. Uh, and Up the Creek, I remember her in Up the Creek, specifically from that movie. Um, oh, and Too All Good was Too All Good Night is her first movie. So. Oh, look at that. But there's a, 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 a long interview with her, and she kind of talks about her career and stuff like that. That's kind of cool. Hmm. It's almost cooler for the bonus features than, than the movie itself, because they, they talk to all the different actresses in the movie and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so Too All Good Night is another um, Christmas horror movie that's, yeah, that I can think of all the time. I'm sure there's a million of them, and people go, oh, you're not talking about this movie, you're not talking about that movie. You know, There's, there's so many of them out there. But, uh, but we're going to get into... We like to do horror movies too, but we like to do everything. That's what I kind of like about doing the show the way that we do it is we can talk about anything. It's not a lot of sometimes we focus on mainly horror because I'm a big horror fan, but it's nice to actually be able to just focus on normal genres stuff too. So well, let's step ahead. Let let's step out of movies for a little bit and let's talk about the classic TV specials, the ones that we grew up watching. Uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, sure. Frosty the Snowman, sure. uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas was one of them too. I don't know if you remember that. You remember I that? Do. I do. The like, mouse. I, yeah, I didn't in like the tower. animation. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that animation. Oh, you didn't like the actual no, animation. I never really that. dug that. I, I, yeah, I haven't seen that one in years, yeah. but I do remember it used to come on all the time like yeah, when we were kids yeah. and stuff like that. But um, 
the the key ones I think that most people remember from that era are the Rankin Bass yeah. ones, the uh, Rudolph, um, Santa, Santa Claus Santa comes Claus. to town, yes, the yeah. Year Without Santa Claus, yeah. those. But um, so, what are your thoughts on uh, like those, Mike? What any memories, thoughts about those? Yeah, I mean that you know that's that's where you 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 cut your teeth as a kid is is watching the Rankin Bass stuff. Yeah, and you know that like. Like Year Without a Santa Claus is is my favorite of that group. That's actually a really good one, and I hadn't seen that one in years, and I rewatched it, and I'm like, that one's actually kind of better than Rudolph. It's like it's it's a better story. It's like it's it's yeah, yeah. It's a deeper story than. You know what's so weird about those Rankin Bass ones is like um I, for years I I couldn't tell what they I knew it was stop motion, but like are they puppets? Are they claymation? Like apparently they're wood or something, right? They're dolls, I guess, just like. Like they probably with wire frames. They yeah, it's like, it's like a stop motion. Yeah, which must have taken forever. But it's pretty impressive because we watched Rudolph just the other night again, and I'm like, the stop motion in this is pretty impressive. Like this must have taken forever for them to make this. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. So yeah, crazy respect for those guys. I mean, yeah, I, I love your your love Santa Claus. You know, you know Heat Miser and and Snow Miser and. <laughs> you know those songs are just ridiculous and yeah the, the and, yeah the guy yeah. with the hair right the yeah, white yeah, hair yeah. Yeah. The miser dude they, yeah. that's uh, funny and oh and, and for for all you listeners out there if you want to know what I look like um, <laughs> watch watch Rudolph and and Yukon Cornelius that's, oh that's, yeah I guess you me. do look like Yukon yeah, Cornelius right yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, the controversy, though, with you, Cornelius, well, this is not controversy, but this is geeky information, but um, apparently the first DVD or the, the DVD release of the previous Blu-ray that came out, I actually bought the new one just because I'm completist, and um, Yukon Cornelius, I don't know how the hell they fucking managed this, like, it's weird, they color timed it, his coat is green, and I'm like, huh? And he's supposed to have, his coat's supposed to be blue. Yeah. All the toys you get of him, his coat is blue. But if you look at that Blu-ray, his coat is green. So they just reissued it again, recolor timed, and now his coat is blue again. And I'm like, <laughs> but, but when you look at them back to back, the color timing difference between the two of them isn't that major. They kind of look almost the same, but his coat is blue. I'm like, so what do they do? Just recolor his coat green? <laughs> like, I don't understand how his coat became just magically, and it is green. Like, green, green. Like, when you look at it, it's like... It looks like that's the color of the coat. Like it doesn't look like it's artificially colored or something. So it's just the weirdest thing. Hmm. But yeah, and the new the new Blu-ray release that came out. I mean, the the Blu-ray releases that came out are cool to have. They're nothing special. They don't have anything major on them. And for for those particular television specials, I was saying this to my wife Katie the other day. I'm like, I really, I'm really surprised they haven't gone back to the well and like remastered those from like negatives or something like that. Maybe they don't have them because they're TV specials. Maybe they're oh they only have like old like the prints that they use or something like right. that but really restored it because those things are so classic from like that era right that i almost feel like they, they deserve the restoration effort but they've never they haven't gotten that kind of like respect they don't look terrible but they definitely could look better they could be like rescanned and like you know cleaned up and stuff like that but yeah you know eh, i don't have any money so i can't do it <laughs> um but yeah, I love I love those. Um, Frosty the Snowman. Yeah, there's another yeah. one. Do you, uh, do you remember the there was a sequel to Frosty? Uh, Frosty Returns. Frosty Returns. Damn right. <laughs> I had never seen the sequel of that until I got the DVD like a couple years ago because it was on there and I watched it. I'm like, God, I never saw this <laughs> like growing up. <laughs> and well, then there was uh, then Rankin Bass threw Frosty in because because Frosty was just a cartoon. Yeah. But then Rankin Bass threw Frosty into the Rudolph sequel. It was, what was it, Frosty and Rudolph's Shiny New Year? Oh, my God, and yeah. And they had Baby New Year. Yeah, that was really annoying. That's right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, I really forgot about There's a ton of them, actually. There's a lot of specials. Actually, there was a box set that came out. I don't have that one anymore, but it was a DVD box set that had a ton of them yeah. on it. Like, the, not just, like, the main ones, but, like, tons of, to, uh, like, some of the more side ones that you don't even remember. Obviously, they all got aired on TV at some point in time. I think some of them probably only aired like once because like they didn't do as well as like say Rudolph or something like that. Do they even should still show Rudolph? I think so. Yeah, they still show Rudolph like on and, network TV. And Frosty and, and yeah, Peanuts, which we'll get to. I'm Peanuts. Sure. So there we go. Yeah. There's uh, there's the next one. Uh, the it's Charlie Brown Christmas, and I'm a huge yeah. Charlie Brown nut. So yeah, me too. <laughs> um, yeah, that I mean that was, you know, I, and again, listeners, if you want to know what I look like. <laughs> Without my beard and mustache, I would look like Charlie Brown. Okay. Yeah, I, okay. We'll put you in the yellow shirt with the stripes. And right. The, well, and you always right. had the black shorts. Right. So that's, that's right. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. But yeah. Um, no, I love the Charlie. It's funny. That is the... Um, 
It's not the very first Charlie Brown special. It is the... I have them right here, so I can tell you. It is... Oh, no, it is. Yeah. Charlie Brown Christmas is the very first Charlie Brown TV special, actually. Um, and uh, it's what's really interesting about this one is... Um, they if, Actually, if you look it up on YouTube, when it originally aired, now it's not on there. And they, yeah, they actually have restored these, and they look pretty good. You know what I'm going to say, right? Going, yeah. The Coca-Cola yeah. thing, where, like, Linus, like, throws... What is it? Linus is, like, gets flung into, yeah. like, the... By yes. Snoopy, right? Yeah, Snoopy flings him and Charlie, and we see Charlie Brown land, but we don't see where Linus goes. Yeah, and it's actually, like, because he, he, he slams into a Coca-Cola logo, yeah. which is so funny that they don't... They, I, I'm really surprised that they couldn't just clear that, just to have it for, like, the... To, for completest sake, you know what I mean? I'd think Coca-Cola would be happy to have, right. have their, you know. Cause they, yeah, because that was kind of like a big deal for them right. back in the day. But um, I'm a huge Peanuts fan, actually. I, I I collected so much Peanuts shit. I was like, I was trying to collect like every Peanuts special for TV for a while there. There's like 80-something of yeah. them. I have like 50 of them. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> I had so many of them. It was like... And some of them are good, and some of them are kind of blah. Like you know, but the um, they did release these. I don't know. Do you ever see these, Mike? I've seen them, but not in a long time. I forgot all about them, actually. These actually, you don't even see these for sale yeah. that much anymore. No, no, you don't. I'm kind of pissed that they stopped though, because uh, they were they were releasing these uh, collections where they were actually in order all the original specials. They did the '60s and they did the '70s. They never did the '80s though. No. I kind of wish they would have done the '80s, but I have a feeling that I think there's some stuff in the '80s that, for whatever rights reasons, has never been re-released. Because there are a handful of Charlie Brown specials from the '80s that like never came back out again. Although they have other ones on, like I have like I have like it's Flash Beagle and on um, on one of uh, <laughs> on one of my other ones <laughs> on uh, Snoopy's. It's, it's with Snoopy's reunion. This one, remember the one with the oh, jug band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this one has it's Flash Beagle on it as well. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm a big uh, obviously. I'm, I was a big big Charlie Brown nut. You've got the films too. This one is pretty cool. I don't know if you've ever seen this. A Happiness is a Warm Blanket is a Charlie Brown special that they did. They re uh, they intentionally made one to look like the old 60s. Did you actually see this? No, I haven't seen it. I know it's about it. It's pretty cool. They intentionally did it to look like the old 60s like television specials. And man, did they nail it. It yeah. really does. But what's interesting about it is, is it kind of adds a... Um, like a sentimental nature to it. It's kind of, it kind of like, I don't know, it kind of chokes you up when you're watching it because you're like, wow. Like, they, like it's obviously made with love from people who loved that era of Charlie Brown, like the classic era of mm -hmm. like Peanuts. Because there's, um, they, they, they've got some original strips reenacted in it and stuff like that, like the classic strips. As a matter of fact, they do the, uh, I think they do the very first strip in it, like with him. Oh, well, there goes Charlie Brown. It's like the, it's some random strip. Like I think it's actually reenacted in it, and it looks exactly like the strip. Wow. So it's, it's kind of cool. I don't know. It's it's pretty cool actually. But uh, yeah, back to Charlie Brown Christmas. Right. We're, we're supposed to be talking about that. <laughs> Not this is like a peanut special. But, uh, <laughs> go ahead, Mike. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's you know, you watch it, and and all the Charlie Brown things, at least you know the main holiday ones. They all have that that kind of melancholy to them, you know. But but the Christmas one that is so depressing. It is kind of depressing. And you don't you don't get it when you're a little kid. You're no. just like, oh, Snoopy, Charlie Brown, it's fun, blah. And you kind of get as you get a little older, you get, wow, they're kind of being mean to him. And then like you watch it now, you go, wow, those kids are assholes. They're total assholes. That's in the original, like the early '60s ones. If you rewatch the '60s ones. Charlie Brown is a freaking punching bag. They yeah. treat him like shit in those original. But I guess it was the whole that was the whole joke. But it's almost like they got softer with it in the 80s because they almost felt like, well, maybe we shouldn't treat Charlie Brown so bad. Let's give him a break. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, yeah. <laughs> I, I will say that the, the Christmas one um, has my favorite piece of animation from any of those. It's right at the beginning when Charlie Brown uh, sees Violet and, and he's like, thank you for the Christmas card, Violet, really sarcastically because yeah. he didn't get one. Yeah. And the animators put this like shit-eaten smile, like sarcastic smile on Charlie Brown's face <laughs> yes. that is so menacingly huge. And, you know, it's not in any teeth. It's just a grin. But it goes, like, up to his ears. And it's so weird and creepy looking. But this is I like, isn't it. like Lucy say something? Well, if you got one, Charlie Brown. Like, yeah, yeah. there was two piles. No, that's the that's the, that's um, the Halloween, the, the Halloween yeah. special. There yeah. were two piles. <laughs> one's to invite and one's not to invite. Oh, man. This, they just killed that. Cause Classic like, stuff. Charlie Brown is a bullying victim. <laughs> he really is. He is. He's he's like one, he's the original, like, bullying victim. Yeah. <laughs> he, Charlie Brown is the poster 
dumpster boy for like the modern bully phenomenon, bullying phenomenon, right? So, but no, I, I love Charlie Brown Christmas, and I, I've literally watched it every single year since like I can even remember. Right. I don't even know when I started watching it, and I and I've seen it like more times than I could ever imagine. You know what I mean? But um. Yeah, so that's Charlie Brown Christmas. That one's awesome. Let's see. Any, any um, those are the main specials. Do you have any other ones listed for specials? I, uh, for specials, I think uh, we remember. Can... Well, you know what? They don't show it anymore. But remember Yogi's First Christmas? Oh my God! For animation, I haven't stuff? seen that in yeah. a long time. The I, Han- that would be Hanna Barbera, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I have it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that uh, that's a cool one. I haven't seen that in like years. I'll get you my I, extra copy. Yes, yeah, <laughs> your spare copy. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I love to get a spare copy. Um, no, yeah, I, I haven't yeah. seen that one in years. That that's on the Warner um, print burn on demand program. Oh, really? Their website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All I, got right. it, I got it last year from. Oh, cool. And and I was always like, as a kid, I liked it, but I also didn't like it. I don't know why. There's something about Yogi Bear that always kind of annoyed me because I don't know, maybe because he was lazy because he always wanted to. Sleep or whatever, um, yeah, yeah. but like, but watching it again as an adult, I'm like, wow, this thing rocks. Oh, that's right. I remember, I didn't like the little kid in the the Yogi's First Christmas because uh-huh. you're not supposed to like him. <laughs> but I really hated that kid, and it made me not. So it just made you it. not want to watch yeah. the special. Wait, well, yeah, I saw, I see one on your paper here that we both kind of like. You wrote it, but the Mr. Magoo's, Mr. Magoo's Christmas. Christmas wow, that, I, yes. I haven't seen that in years, but I used to love that one. That the, one was great. The best songs, man. The, the best songs. <laughs> Razzleberry dressing, man. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I don't. You don't even have to be a Mr. Magoo fan to appreciate Mr. Magoo's Christmas. No, because I honestly didn't... I don't really know Mr. Magoo like, as, as yeah. an animated cartoon. I'm sure it had like its run as an animated cartoon, probably a long one, but like I don't really know it. I just know the Christmas special, the right. Mr. Magoo Christmas special. <laughs> right. That's And you know, and that that actually has a lot of depressing songs in it too. Really? You know, when when he's you know in the, the schoolhouse as a kid and he's not getting picked up and he, like, that's de- got some depressing <laughs> shit. But then they have, you know, the the raspberry dressing song and it's great what is it you have vincent price listed oh is that oh, yeah. the muppets well, well i or... made a i made a list of my favorite christmas carol adaptations oh because... okay all right that... okay let, let's go into that now okay. like, we've done the specials basically we can yeah. move on with the christmas carol um yeah cr- the christmas carol for me is my my favorite holiday story yeah you me know, too i you know i read the book i i watch i watch almost pretty much any adaptation i can find like i haven't seen the barbie one or my little pony or whatever but, well, there was a newer one that I saw, which actually was pretty good too. Which is like um, from the two, 90s or something. It wasn't so bad. I haven't seen it though. It, they did. They released it on DVD. Um, it was like a, a new made-for-TV movie version of it. I don't have it though. I had seen it though. I don't know. Have you ever seen it, that one? Was it? It wasn't the Kelsey Grammer one. Was it? Yeah, was I think it, it was the, the Kelsey Grammer one. Is that the one? It might have been. Yeah, yeah. I, I only saw it once, so it wasn't so bad. It wasn't terrible. I just, my favorite one is probably your favorite one as well. I, I said most people's it was the George C. George Scott C. one. Scott, yeah. I mean, to, to me, that is a classic version of that. And you know why? There's an eerie factor to that. Like, that's a creepy it is. movie. It, uh, is. It's, it It kind of functions on two levels. It functions as a, as a cool Christmas special, and it functions as one of those, like, cool, creepy, made-for-TV 80s movies that you just remember seeing as a kid. You know what I mean? Uh, <clears throat> you, you'll never find a creepier Jacob Marley than in that film. No, when no. He does the jaw drops when yeah. he takes the... Oh, it's just so, so much attention to detail. And I, I think, I, I mean, I think it really holds up. I, there's just a style to it and, and a look look to it like there's an attention to detail for the, pe- the the period i don't know and it was a made for tv movie too so yeah. it, but it, it did actually come out on blu-ray i do actually have that on blu-ray but they uh they, they full really? they full framed it but it is a high definition transfer wow. it looks pretty nice too um but wow. yeah i like that oh well, go ahead sorry oh no what are we gonna say oh i was just gonna i was i was moving along with the yeah, christmas yeah, yeah, cards but cool. you have um but there's um there's the muppets one of yes, course yes which yeah. is I just watched that the other day. <laughs> I, I, I've yeah. actually only seen the Muppets one once, and I need to watch it again this year. Wow. Because yeah, I only saw so it when good. it recently came out. Because I, I, Or maybe I saw it when I was younger. I don't know. I didn't see it when I was younger. No, because that was a later Muppets era for us. Like was, from My era, with the, well, our era of the Muppets was Muppet Movie, Great Muppet Caper, and Muppets Take Manhattan. And then there was... And I have like all the movies now, but actually... Yeah. But like... That was the they kept first going. post... Jim Henson death it was that thing that they okay that was the yeah. first one they did with oh okay cool um, so that would have been a Brian Henson yeah. production at that point yep. yeah okay cool but yeah I mean I, I it's, it's, it's good I have to watch it again it's interesting because I didn't find it to be one of my favorite Muppet things when I rewatched it but as 
you almost you have to view it as a Christmas Carol though. Like so, it's like right. weird. I'm watching the Mupp for Muppets, but I'm like, if you view it for a Christmas Carol, that's a pretty good adaption of the Christmas Carol story. I agree. You know, and and you know, and Beaker flips off Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> I don't care. You watch it. He flips him off when he's getting kicked out, because Bunsen and Beaker play the the uh, solicitors looking for the donations right. for charity. Yeah. And Scrooge kicks him out of the counting house, and Beaker turns at the door and sticks his hand up, and he's only got three fingers, but that middle one is clearly showing. <laughs> and he flips him off, and they walk away. It's that's great. that's awesome. <laughs> So what else you got here for Chris? Uh, I think that, the... that Vincent Price one that you mentioned. Yeah, what is um, it? That I found on DVD a couple years ago. Vincent Price narrates an adaptation of the film or of the story. It's only like forty minutes long. Yeah, and it cuts away to Vincent Price, who's in like a living room or something. And he and he narrates the story to push it along. Yeah, and then it goes back to the acting, and it's in black and white. It's from I don't know the. the 50s 60s something like that oh wow um maybe earlier but yeah it's it's really short and he def he definitely is there to throw the movie forward because they don't have a lot of time but yeah it's just it's kind of it's odd it's hard to find but you can get on amazon oh weird um, but it's totally worth checking out especially if you're a vincent price fan. right if you're into vincent price's stuff yeah which i've actually just recently kind of gotten to like i mean I, I liked a few vincent price things i like the fly and i liked the the movie called a movie called theater of death Theater Death? Blood. Theater Blood. That that's uh my buddy Pete turned me on to that movie and I was like, Oh, that's a cool movie. Yeah. Oddly enough, that's the one that hasn't been reissued yet on like Blu ray because they put the two Vincent Price sets. I haven't got the second one yet. But the second one's got some cool stuff on it, like Return of the Fly, Tomb of Lygia, um oh, a couple other ones. The Raven. Mm -hmm. That's in the second one and stuff. The first set's got some cool I, I actually like the like the House of Usher and the Pit and the Pendulum. Those movies are pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Like I had never really watched those movies growing up and I, like when i rewatched them this time i'm like well there's a cool style to these movies there's just something about them that's entertaining to watch i actually really liked which is kind of one of the lesser favorite ones for most people i liked witchfinder general oh i love Witchfinder. i like i, I like there was a dark tone to witchfinder general that was different than the other stuff that he had done and i'm like well this is an interesting side of like a vincent price playing like kind of a a dark character yeah. you know what i mean yeah and he had a lot of problems with that i know yeah because i watched a little thing about it and they yeah. said like that's like kind of one of his least favorite roles because it was too dark for him but i'm like that's actually kind of cool because it's a different side of vincent price it's not the typical they said i was reading they were saying that the director of that movie had to keep telling vincent price not to do the vincent price thing like his because he has a certain way of speaking when he does things they had to keep kind of de-pricing him you know right, what i mean right. bring it down a little bit to keep it as realistic as possible but no i i do i do like witchfinder general that was actually or actually it's, it's also called the conqueror worm right hey that's the alternate title for it but um yeah I, okay i think it's also called you better watch out <laughs> it, it may be <laughs> there's probably about 35 movies called you better watch out so <laughs> but um oh yeah so the, those are the uh the christmas carol adaptions right yeah. that i, I mean I, that yeah I'm, I and the other one the, like the only other one i had is do you remember there was the animated christmas carol that was a half an hour long they used to show every year on like saturday afternoon you know i probably ha I, i'm I, pretty sure i've seen it like i, I just do. don't remember yeah. it too and well but i actually found it on dvd somehow i was so happy and and it did the same thing that it did when I was a kid, and I always thought that there was a mess up. Is they show they they show the beginning real if you want to call it that, and then they show the middle section, but the video is actually the beginning again, and the and the the oh, the weird. audio is correct. The video is not, and I'd always get so mad because I really love the animation in it. And now it turns out when you get the DVD, same thing. Wow, so yeah. there must have been some kind of weird screw up. It's probably the only print that they have <laughs> right. to transfer that from. That's so you weird. Know, it, or like it's probably the network broadcast master, like the tape, the v VHS, the, those tapes they used to have, those videotapes that they use for network broadcast masters. Like that's well, probably all they have for it. But it wasn't even a, like on major network. It was a syndicated. It was a syndicated cartoon. Oh, yeah, so, so weird. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it was like three ninety eight huh. on Amazon. So. <laughs> right, <laughs> but there's so many like. Those Christmas specials when we when we were kids, there was, so, there, was like, there was a Garfield one as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Which I don't remember too well, but like I I know there was definitely a Garfield one that I had seen. Right. I kind of remember the Garfield things, the Halloween one more than the Christmas one. Right. The gimme. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> when I would go to the door and they put the bags out, it's like gimme. <laughs> That's like the one thing I remember from it. But um, 
yeah so okay so that's um the uh christmas carol adaptions yeah i mean that and those those are just the ones that i like and and there's more i'm sure there's like a million they've done that so many times like the old black and white ones right and there's a a original one the the original one with which we didn't neither one of us even talked about i haven't actually never seen it it's uh it's the original black and white christmas carol one yeah yeah that's that's it yeah right yeah Yeah. that one (laughs) but um have you have you ever seen that one no i've I've seen it i mean it's good it's just you know i i think I you know I always want to go to the more modern ones that I grew up with. Yeah. Um, there was that um, Patrick Stewart one, which that maybe that's the one you're talking about too from the oh, 90s. Wait, where that's not a musical. That's no, just, that's the one that's that I was talking about. Okay, it was yeah. the one with Patrick Stewart, yeah, not that, the one with the um the other guy. No, with Kelsey Green. Yeah. No, no, Patrick Stewart. That yeah. was the one that I had talked about. It's actually it's not a musical. It's just a straight right. version of the story. That's that one wasn't one. so bad. That yeah, actually that's... that one was okay. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I remember, I remember I saw that on TV when it aired or something. It was like a couple years. It was like. Not they call it like ten years ago, but like yeah, yeah. I when think it, it was like out. TNT, right? Yeah, it was one yeah. of those like TNT, like those made for cable movies. Yeah, yeah, totally. But okay, so what do you? What else you got here, Mike? You got a um, crazy well, do, list. Do you want to go into all the Muppet Christmas things? Yeah, yeah. Stuff? Let's do those. Yeah. You, you're, you know those a little more than I do. Yeah, I, I know the Muppet Christmas Carol, but I don't know the other ones. So yeah, go, go. I, I, I mean the Muppets, the whole Jim Henson company, and the, they they know how to do Christmas, because um, you know everybody knows Christmas Carol. We already talked about. Um, but then they also did one, which I just got a, a boot of at Rhode Island Comic Con, um, the Muppet Family Christmas. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you remember, have you seen that? I've heard of it. Actually, oh. I think that just got officially released. I don't know about that. I, if so, I need it. I don't know. I, uh, but, but go, go ahead. I, I know it was on, it was released on VHS, but anyway. Right. Go ahead. I mean, that is like, that just hits you right in the chest. Like the, you know, your heart is hurting from how, how wonderfully sweet that that film is it's called muppet family christmas Muppet family christmas yeah All right. um and it's basically they no wait oh that's no this is it there's a dvd yeah that's it well 88 it's... it's going for 88 dollars right yeah it's out of print oh this is the one that came out you can talk about this one too oh. i've never seen the oh, it's a very yeah. muppet christmas movie. yeah we'll get to that that's okay. also awesome okay but yeah muppet family christmas they go to um <clears throat> the the gang goes to fozzy's mother's house <gasps> To spend the holidays, and she's about to go on a cruise or something, and she has to stay and whatever. But they're in it. The Sesame Street characters oh, all wow. come by. It's like this gigantic shindig. Yeah. Um, Fraggle Rock is in it. All really? The, all those characters are in it. Like they just put everything Henson did at That's that time. Cool. Yeah, and threw it in there, and it's just really, it's it's just really heartfelt and. I mean, I love it. I watched it three times in a row. When the other was day. this? Like they look older. Like I'm just looking at a picture of the the box right now. They look it, more classic than than like modern Muppets. It might have been the last thing Jim Henson did. Okay. I think it came out after Muppets Take Manhattan. Okay. Because I'm saying it looks like they look like in the in this picture that I'm looking at right now. It looks very like, like Muppets Take Manhattan. Yeah. Like, yeah, so that like the, more classic Muppets than like wow, that's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, that very well could. And uh, like I have the the boot I have is uh, I believe it's German, perhaps uh-huh. their DVD release. Um, but there's no subtitles or anything. It's just you know straight. But it's a bootleg, so you think it's going to be a shit quality, but no, because it's taken off a DVD. So it's actually so somebody, it looks pretty so good. So it's just ripped off of like probably an official release over there right, for right. some reason. Yeah. Probably this. It's probably ripped it, off of it this. It probably is. So, it's probably the only one that came out. <laughs> so, I mean, if you can track that down, it's so worth watching if you're a Muppet fan. Oh, cool. It's, it's great. Um, a Muppet Family Christmas. That's yeah. what it's called. Oh, man, it's so damn good. From, um, I'm looking for a year. I don't see a year here anywhere. But um, do you know? Do you, uh, I, I the don't. The release I'm, date is 2003 for the DVD, but right. like that's not the, I'm sure that's not the original release date. I'm, I'm guessing 84, 85. Oh. Muppet Family Christmas on IMDb. Let's see. 87 87 wow so that was definitely after so you're right this is right after Muppets Take Manhattan so yeah that was probably the last thing Jim Henson did with like the major thing anyway wow cool man well that's kind Um, of a find but yeah, it's it's worth. I'll I'll get you my spare copy. Yeah, yeah. And it was forty two minutes. It was, uh, so it was a, it was it must have been a TV special. Obviously. Um, yeah, I think that's forty two minutes. But the unedited version. With, oh, there's a there's, longer. There's cut? extra songs. Oh, uh, cool. I think that's about an hour. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Wow, um, neat. So that yeah, that please track it down if you. Yes. Can. Um, and then they they took a break. I'm gonna go back to the non Muppet gem in a minute. That's fine. Um, 
But they took a break for a while because, you know, the, we know all the Jim Henson stuff. Yeah, yeah. They weren't making movies or whatever. But then when they came back, they did, um, which we, that was what you had mentioned had just come back out on DVD, the Very Merry Muppet Christmas movie. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that, man, they came back swinging. And I, that's one of my favorite. I like that better that than That one's really Christmas good, too. I've, see, I, I've never seen that one either. Yeah, I like. I mean, it's updated. The You know, the voices. You can tell they're trying to find their niche back in the, you know, the world. Because it was the first thing they put out in a long time. Okay. And, you know, you know Kermit sounds a little off. Fozzie sounds a little off. Because it's all different people. Like, right. Frank Oz isn't even doing it anymore. Really? Okay. Yeah. But, I mean... But you, you know, you get used to their new style of voice and you, you know, you forgive that and it's a really good movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it was a, it was a TV movie. Oh, um, cool. Joan Cusack is like the, the main baddie in it. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, they bring back the cameos and it's, you know, Mel Brooks is the snowman. Oh, that's awesome. You know, it's, it, it's like, it's, it's got the soul the of thing. the Muppets. It, it's what the Muppets should be from oh, back cool. in the day, you know? Oh, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, I definitely, again, highly, highly recommend that one. It's, you know, it hits you right in the, right in the heart. Cool. Um, after that, they got some momentum, so they put out, um, Letters to Santa. It was Muppet, Muppet Christmas, Letters to Santa, something like that. Really? Okay. They have a whole bunch of them, huh? Yeah, they do. They did a lot. And they usually do, Muppet, Letters to Santa was, it's all right. Yeah. That, that's the one where I go, mm, well, I'll forgive that one. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it's, it's not bad. It's just kind of boring. Yeah. You know? Okay. Um, I think that was just like probably like a direct-to-DVD kind of like just it, release. It was, was a it TV special. special. Oh, it was a special. Yeah. Okay. And at first, like the DVD came out and it was like 25 bucks. I'm like, why would I'm not paying that. So I paid right. like seven bucks this year for it. Yeah. But it's good. Not, it's something for the completest stone. Okay. Um, yeah. And what is this other but thing? But this other thing is the legendary Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Oh, that thing! Yeah, wow, that's nuts. Which which was Henson produced, and um, the thing about that is, if you get the DVD, which you absolutely should, because it's only yeah. like four bucks on Amazon right now. Um, there it is. Yeah, it's it's so oh, it's so damn good. What is it three ninety nine? It is three ninety nine. Yeah, three ninety nine. The DVD is literally three ninety nine. That's the best four dollars you can spend this holiday season. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, the only bad thing about the DVD is when they'd show it on HBO every day during holidays. <laughs> every day. Every day, every day. It was on every damn day. day. Um, it had an introduction from Kermit. Oh. And, like, you know, they, he introduced the town that they were in because, you know, everybody's going to go in thinking they're the Muppets and the Muppets aren't there. So I think they put Kermit in there to be like, hey, guys, this is good. I stand by it. Oh, okay. So because it's because it's, it's it's a different story. It's not right. it's it's Muppets, but it's not the, the classic Muppets. Right. It's a new group of Muppets. Right. I, you know, this looks so familiar to me. Oh, yeah. I swear I must have seen this growing up like so, at some point in time. But like I, I had forgotten about this. I haven't seen this in years. Yeah, they you know, they're they're a poor family. So yeah. they so they they join the talent show in town to try to That's get awesome. money to buy each other presents. Yeah, and, yeah. And the River Bottom Nightmare Band wins, which do, they do like <laughs> they do about as metal as you're gonna get from the Hensons. That's and awesome. It's, oh, it, it's it's really good. So Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah, that's... it's really sweet. It's it's very it's freaking very cool. Good. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, we can go off to um. Let's. There's a couple movies that we can mention too, like yeah, yeah. actual like theatrical films, yeah. obvious ones. Now that the people remember for Christmas, Home Alone. Oh sure. Is is a Christmas movie, so right. to speak. Um, and, um, as also Home Alone, actually there's a two, a three, and I think even a four, but I'm not sure. I, I've seen one and two. I don't, I don't know. Have you seen any of the other I, one? I think that's where you, cause I don't think Macaulay, I think Macaulay's little brother is in. Like, yeah. I know one and I know one and two. The second one is Home Alone, like in New York. He gets mm. strand. It's the same freaking movie again. He just, it's actually, to be honest with you, the second one's really not that great when you try to watch it now. It's all right. Well, Home Alone is a classic. Home Alone's a really, like, like it, what's funny about that movie is when we were growing, when I was growing when we were growing up um there was that movie was so freaking popular <laughs> that like i kind of like after a while like kind of just forgot about it because it was like you know how, how when we were growing up some things became such a freaking phenomena that like it was on uh, people were watching it left and right you turn on the tv it was on you kind of gave up on it after yeah, a while because of, like there. i've seen home alone so many yeah. freaking times but yeah. i literally rewatched it a couple years ago because i picked it up on blu-ray and i'm like this movie's freaking great it's funny as hell yeah. it holds up really well it's weird to think that macaulay culkin now like, like i don't know because he's just a very different person than i mean he grew up i mean right get a given right. you know but um 
Yeah, if we have thoughts on Home Alone, anything, Mike? No, I like it's you know it's and John it's, Hughes. And it's a John Hughes movie. Yeah, which you I, I like that's one of those movies. He does some movies where you don't expect it to be John Hughes, and it is. Right, like planes, trains, and automobiles yeah. is a John Hughes movie, yeah. but it doesn't. It's 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 slightly different than a John Hughes, I think. Yeah. Anyway, did he? I mean, did he write and direct that? Um, planes, trains, and automobiles. Uh, no. No, they're Home Alone. Oh, Home Alone. Yeah. Um, no, it's directed by Chris Columbus. Oh, okay. So Home Alone came out in 1990, the original. It's written by John Hughes, and it's directed by Chris Columbus, the guy who did the uh, Harry Potter. He's yeah. most known for Harry Potter. But he also did... Chris Columbus did a lot of cool stuff, actually. Like, from, like, our era of growing up. Well, he... The Goonies. Oh, Goonies yeah. Wait, did he... Chris Columbus didn't direct the Goonies, did he? I think... I don't know what IMDb is talking about. Did he... Adventures in Babysitting. I fucking love that oh, movie. Wow. That, that's a classic movie. So he did that. He did Mrs. Doubtfire... Um, Home Alone, Home Alone 2, of course, um, Stepmom, which I've seen that movie, that movie wasn't that bad, um, and, and some of the Harry Potter movies, of course, um, so he did not direct, he did not direct, I don't know why the hell, I, yeah, he, sometimes he, IMDb has some weird shit on it, the Goonies, maybe he had something to do with yeah, it, he probably I think he was a writer on it or something like that, yeah. Yeah. but, um, but yeah, no, I, I, I do, I, I like Home Alone, and actually it's funny, thinking about it now, it's an early Chris. Christopher Columbus. That's what that guy looks like? I don't even know what that guy looks like. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so Home Alone. All right, that's a, that's, that's a good one. Another one which you're going to bring up, which kind of almost goes into the horror category. Instead, we got it has to be mentioned, an honorary mention, Gremlins. Absolutely. Gremlins is a Christmas movie. I'm right. sorry. Oh, of course it I is. watch it every year around Christmas time. Right. I have to watch Gremlins because Gremlins is awesome. And it's like a Christmas horror movie. Well, it, it's really fine line. It rides the line. It's, it's sort of a kid's. But so I mean I saw it as a kid growing up, but there's some terrifying shit in Gremlins when you get towards the end of right, it. Right. <laughs> the, the the um the whole tail end when like when they like the Gremlins jump in the pool and then like a million freaking Gremlins come out and then they they, they start terrorizing the entire town. You, there's like a Santa Claus it's... getting like eaten alive by a Gremlin, <laughs> like screaming his head off as the cops are driving by him. <laughs> you just see him going ah like screaming with a Gremlin on his head. But no, that that's awesome. So Gremlins is definitely a Christmas movie. Um, uh, any other you can think of, Mike? Uh, well, the, the, like there's, I mean, what do you got? Yeah, the, there's there seems to be movies that like you don't immediately think, hey, that's a Christmas movie. Kind of like you're saying with yes. Gremlins, um, which I, one I forgot to totally forgot to write down, but um, Trading Places. Trading Places is totally a Christmas. That's a Christmas movie. movie. It is a Christmas right? movie. Yeah. Um, even even like if you don't want to go down the Eddie Murphy role. Uh, coming to America, somewhat. There's Christ a there's, there's, there's a large element movie, of Christmas you know? in that movie. Yeah, there's, there's I know because it, you can kind of start going and that. Oh, look at what is typically deemed a Christmas movie, which is really not Christmas. Die Hard. Right. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. It is Actually, Die Hard Two is even more of a Christmas movie because it takes place in, totally during Christmas at like the airport and right. stuff like that. So yeah, so Die Hard is a Christmas action movie, I guess yeah, you could call right. it. Right. That's right. <laughs> um, and then. One of my favorites, Better Off Dead. Oh yeah, that is a and Christmas Better Off movie. Dead is a Christmas movie. Right. You're right. Wow. Yeah, they, I Funny. mean, you know, they even go give presents and they go through that. Like that is legitimately a Christmas movie. <laughs> French fries. Oh man, I love Savage <laughs> Steve Holland. I love those movies. I love One Crazy Summer too. Actually, yeah. did you ever see? I, I've never seen How I Got Into College. It's a good movie. It's is not it? as good because okay. I think he wrote, didn't direct, or vice versa. Okay. Um, so it's so there's a little bit of Savage Steve weirdness missing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's still a good movie. It's still a good movie. Oh yeah, cool. it's worth worth checking out. Okay, cool. That's like, that's like the only three that he's most known for, right? The... He's mo- he's done a lot of like animation work and, okay. and TV stuff yeah. since then. Um, but yeah, that but better off dead, man. What a great great <laughs> film. That's like cool. Christmas written All right, along. so let me see. Do we have anything else? Um, oh, uh, Christmas Vacation. Oh Jesus Christ! How could we forget yeah, that? That's one of the most <laughs> obvious ones, and we did. Yeah, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, which is awesome. Which and which is so funny about Christmas Vacation is that like they took an like an R rated franchise and turned it into a family feature. They really did. That's a great. But point. it works. It does. But it works. Like it's one of the few moments where that works because European Vacation, which we've talked about this before, it's actually I love European that Vacation. It's my favorite. It's one of my favorite ones, even though it's kind of looked at as one of the lesser sequels of the bunch. I just grew up loving it, and I love European Vacation. Right. But European Vacation goes. The first ones are. European Vacation is PG-13, so it's riding the line. And then by there's the time you get... It. There's still boobs. <laughs> and actually, and then Christmas Vacation, I think, is flat out PG. No, it's still PG-13. Okay, oh, okay. so it's PG-13. Um, written by John Hughes, but not... I mean, he wrote all these, but he... A lot of... Most of them, but he didn't direct them. Actually. Right. 
I think, right? Written by John Hughes. Yeah, written by John Hughes. Screenplay. By... I think John Hughes had some. Did John Hughes have something to do with uh, National Lampoon? I don't know. The first one, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, the, the, the magazine, magazine as well. I think he might have. I think he might have been like a contributing writer or one of the writers. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I'm probably totally wrong. I'm making shit up right now. <laughs> but that's what we do. <laughs> we just make shit up. That's, that's right. It's it's fact if we said it. So. <laughs> No, but yeah, Christmas Vacation. I freaking love Christmas Vacation. You, <laughs> like, you know what? For me, what's funny about Christmas Vacation is I liked European Vacation so much. When I saw Christmas Vacation, I was, I like, know. At first, you're like, this When this I was sucks. a kid, when I first saw it, like, growing <laughs> right. up, like, because I was a fan of the original Vacation and European Vacation, I'm like, well, they kind of, they kind of wimped out on this one. It's yeah. not. But now, looking back on it, it's a good it's holiday it film. It's it a good is. comedy hard holiday film. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you kind of, It's it's it is a great film. I love it. <laughs> well, and here's another one that, um, another obvious one. Jesus, uh, a Christmas story. Oh, Jesus. Bob How Clark's a Christmas that? story. How could Bob you forget Clark, that movie? Black Christmas, which we kind of only touched upon earlier in the horror thing. I mean, Black Christmas. Yeah. Was his. Was this a Christmas horror movie? We didn't. Right. We didn't really mention that one too much. Yeah. But Black Christmas was. Technically, the first Christmas horror film made, actually, and it's it's just a, actually what's funny about Black Christmas is um, Black Christmas was rerun. I think it was so that they could um, try to market it outside of the Christmas holidays. I don't know if you remember this or not, but HBO used to show it as a stranger in a, in the house. Really? Yeah, it had an alternate title called The Stranger in the House. That's how I saw it because my grandmother had re- used to record stuff on uh, VHS tapes, all these movies off cable. And I saw it as a stranger. In, in, it's either Stranger in the House or in our house. Like I can't remember. Actually, I'm going to look it up right now. But um, but yeah, I love Black Christmas. And actually, of course, Porky's, another Bob Clark classic. Right, right. But um, yeah, but going back to A Christmas Story, though, because that's the Christmas one. But I... That, I mean, I, I think it's just one of those movies that I, I I think probably everybody in the world has seen A Christmas Story. I, I, hope <laughs> I would so. imagine that everybody in the world has seen A Christmas Story. <laughs> I, I hope they have. I, and again, that was something that would be on HBO all the time. Yep. I would watch it. There was one day where it was on Cinemax or something, and I didn't get Cinemax. Uh-huh. And that was back with the old cable boxes. I yeah. watched that movie on Scramble. <laughs> because you can still back then you can yeah. still hear it right you just couldn't see any right 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 so yeah i love that movie so much i watched it on scramble <laughs> that's hilarious it's, yeah it's just it's just man it's a great movie i can't find it but oh, 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 oh. um but yeah no, I, I love a christmas story it's funny now with the christmas story because like tnt has their thing now where they run it like 24 hours on, right. the, on christmas day <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> over and over again hey um it just keeps they just keep coming to my head another christmas special that we really didn't think about the grinch Oh right, and we were going through special. There's so so much, man. Right, the Gr- the Grinch who stole Christmas, like, and I mean that, and you know, again, has horror ties because Boris, Boris Karloff narrates. That's right, Boris Karloff does narrate that. So. That was always my growing up. That was like, like you know how like you have like like my like my dad like he had some of his things that he grew up watching as a kid that were like his favorite things. Like my dad was always a huge fan of The Wizard of Oz. So this is kind of cool things about like you know your dad that you get to know like when you're a kid and. He loved The Grinch. Like, we had to watch The Grinch every single year. If it was on, we all sat down and watched The Grinch because he loved The Grinch. Like, I don't know. It's just one of those things that he watched growing up, I guess. Because The Grinch was like the 60s, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. It was, it, so. The original, like, it aired in the 60s. Yeah, because that was, um, uh, who was the animator? Chuck Jones. And really? I, okay, I'm, so yeah. the, the so the Grinch is, uh, oh, wow, so it has a Looney Tunes connection it there. Does, it totally. does. It does. Man, love Chuck Jones. Well, that's not it. No, that's there's some random. I just typed in the Grinch on YouTube and I got like something from 2000. It's a video game. Oh, wow. yeah, that is not what I'm looking for. Have you ever seen? I, what about? Have you ever seen the remake with Jim Carrey? I've tried to watch I, it. I yeah, I can't. I'm, I I don't dig it. I yeah. No. No, no I don't dig it either. I, I I it was dumb. I, I I found it really dumb and I had a hard time like getting through it. How the Grinch Stole Christmas, 1966. There you go. So there's the actual year of it. And like you said, yeah, directors Tuck, Chuck Jones and a guy named Ben Washam, Washam, Washam. Probably another person involved with Looney Tunes or something like that. Um, but um, yeah, there's, there's another one. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. <laughs> um, hey, uh, you, anything else? <laughs> uh, how about Santa with Muscles? What's Santa with Muscles? Santa with Muscles. Oh, okay. Let's get into the wrestlers in Christmas Oh, this is good because you know section. you know wrestlers better than me, yeah. so you can talk a little bit about this. There's there's Santa with Muscles with Hulk Hogan. <laughs> uh, you know, it's as bad as it sounds. <laughs> uh, was it a made-for-TV movie? No. No, I think it was a straight-to-VHS movie. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, there there it is. Yeah. There it is. 1996. 96. So that was, you know, Hogan was between... He doesn't even have a poster image on IMDb. That's amazing. <laughs> um, it was PG. So it was like, it was official, I guess, like released. It doesn't say like made for video. So probably... Well, it, it was in that time in Hogan's career when he was, he was done with WWE, F at the time. And before he joined, he was really big in WCW. Like, he might have been there, but yeah. before the NWO thing, if you guys know wrestling. Um, so he was in that, he was stuck in that that little era, and it was like nobody really gave a shit about him. And then he made bad movies like this and and, um, and that nanny movie he did. Oh, um, yeah, that movie, huh? Yeah. Uh, I um, forgot about that movie. Yeah, Mr. Nanny, I think it was. <laughs> um, so, the, yeah, there was there was that. An evil um, millionaire gets amnesia and then believes he is Santa Claus. That's the plot. Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that amazing? That's a plot right there. And he's the evil millionaire as Hulk Hogan. It's yeah. He's he's. Yeah, I think yeah. I think the. Uh, I think the poster had him doing his double bicep shot with the Santa hat. Oh, yeah, classic! Yeah, it's it's awesome. <laughs> um, and then there was Goldberg was in Santa's sleigh, and as sleigh is S L A Y. Oh, it was a horror. It was like a horror. Yeah, yeah, thing, right? yeah. A, yeah. It was a Christmas horror movie. And there it is. 2005. Bill Goldberg. That may be the worst Christmas movie ever made. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's terrible. It oh is, God! I've okay. You've seen that? <laughs> I've never seen this movie, but oh, I've but seen, you've seen that DVD. There's cover. a DVD cover right here on IMDb as I'm looking at it right now, and it's like I've seen this like in a million. I used to see this in like the bargain bins like everywhere. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's it's god awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that just doesn't look the, the the cover just makes it like yeah. But then again, you can't judge a lot of times with these covers because sometimes like the covers for some of these like lower budget releases are horrible. I can just imagine what they would do to our movies if like they actually got picked up by a company and they like did some terrible fucking cover art for like Netflix or some that's shit true. like that. That's they probably true. take our like all beautiful posters and that's, like destroy that's them. Right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what was that? Uh, you know what's another one actually yeah. I, I just thought of one actually that um uh, that wow this is funny wait i'm just i just want to get the uh, oh that's just what i was thinking of oh no maybe not no no you know you're thinking okay. of the one i am right this one probably santa claus the movie oh the, was that the dudley 1985 Moore one? with dudley Moore. Okay, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it was done by the salt kinds the guys who did the superman movies right and supergirl and it actually looks like a superman movie the style of it but i gotta tell you this movie does not hold up very well I, when you rewatch uh, it. I don't have you seen it. I haven't it? seen yes. it. No, no, no not since But it was back 19. Then. I think I saw this movie in the movie theater when it came out. My grandmother took me. It's a directed by a guy named Jeanette Schwark, who actually also made like uh, he made Jaws two. Wow. He directed and Supergirl, which I love. Supergirl. Yeah, I like Supergirl. Supergirl's a good movie, but uh, not too many people like Supergirl. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. It doesn't get a lot of love. Actually, in the Somewhere in Time movie with, uh, it's really good too. With um. Christopher Reeve? Christopher Reeve. Oh, I remember that. That's a time travel movie? Yeah. And the one at the end was really creepy. He, like, fucking dissolves into, like, the ether at the yeah. end and is, like, sweating. And it's, like, a creepy-ass movie. It's a cool movie, actually. And, and we're, as kids, we're going, that's Superman, no! Right. <laughs> and what's so funny is it's Richard Math that uh, uh, Somewhere in Time is a Richard Matheson story, so Ooh, Twilight Zone connects. Yeah, it's very right. Twilight zone E if you think about it. Yeah. Like, looking back on it. That's a good movie. No, but Santa Claus the movie, yes, was uh, from 1985. And, uh, I don't know, it was just this big fantasy kind of adventure Santa Claus movie. Almost too big. When you rewatch it now, it's like, it's ridiculous. The sets, it's like, they spent probably like $40 million on this movie back in the 80s <laughs> to make it. And all their Superman profit. Right. And like, it's just, yeah, it just, I don't know. I mean, maybe, I'm sure there are people that like it still, but it just, John Lithgow is in it as well. That's right. Oh. John Lithgow plays like a, like an evil, like a, like corporate businessman in the movie. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he can usually do no wrong though. I John Lithgow's great Lithgow. in everything he he's in. I love John Lithgow. But um, I don't know. All right. Um, I, I got one. You ready? All right, you go. ready for this? Yes. What do you got? Have you ever seen Santa Claus? C L A W S. Oh, I I know of it. I don't know if I've ever seen. Wait, I want to type yes. this. Over. Santa Claus. For, like for all of you Night of the Living Dead and Return of the Living Dead fans of uh, John A. Russo, and like you think that he can do no wrong. No. That's no. not oh, that's the not movie. <laughs> I typed in Santa Claus on IMDb and I got, I got a movie with cats. That's hilarious. If it's you 2014. Look at what it really is. That's I, new. I, I kind of want to see that. Actually, <laughs> it's like kitties. I like cats and stuff. Um, wow, it didn't even come up. If you put in Debbie Rochon, oh, okay, you'll be able to find it. All right. Um, but yeah, Debbie Rochon is in it. Basically, I don't know what was in John Russo's head. I don't know if he just wanted to make like a skin flick or something. <laughs> oh, there, there it is, is right there. Right there. Um, 
1996. 1996. I mean, it's it's great because it's like you know really sexy girls and whatever, and they, it's it's a Santa slasher. Yeah. And they tell some really boring parts of the story, and then all of a sudden they just cut away to one of the models. There's like four different models, and it just cuts to them doing a striptease <laughs> in like you know Christmassy mm-hmm. clothing, and they get naked and they roll around and it's just like this like hey drag off to this period and then they go back to the movie and then they go back to a girl and debbie rashawn's one of the girls and it's it is very hot um but it's a terrible i remember this like there's another picture on imdb here another video box i remember that both both of those pictures that you're looking at were i have dvds of both okay and i was just gonna say it was this was a um alternative cinema the ei independent cinema the um they uh tons of movies with that um chick there uh, misty monday misty oh, right, 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 which right, is right, kind of right. like softcore porn yes. but also yeah. comedies they used to show them on like cinemax like late at night and yeah. shit like that yeah this is it, it we could they, this company has some good stuff though because I, I there's a movie called bloodletting that they that was released through this company which is this company was kind of one of the reasons why I said, well, I can make low-budget movies because there, there was some stuff that was filmed like on VHS that they released. Like this guy named J.R. Bookwalter because I was I kind of got into this company for a while. They had a weird little thing. I know I got really off at the tangent. Yeah. Ah, uh, alternative cinema. <laughs> but they, they used to have a magazine, Alternative Cinema Magazine as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they used to sell all their stuff through Alternative Cinema. And you could submit your movies as well if you made like movies to them. I mean, I don't know how much stuff they actually released. I mean, it was probably the same thing as the Charles Band thing. Like if you got lucky, they put something out. Yeah. But that was this Santa Claus movie. This was one of those um, alternative cinema, EI, independent cinema movies. Yeah. I mean, if you're a fan of Debbie Rashawn and yeah. her, you know, her assets, uh, her flesh, <laughs> uh, definitely pick this movie up. It's written and directed by John Russo, yeah, huh? Yeah, this is really, a total John Russo just, movie. It's, but it's really bad. <laughs> And I feel bad because John Russo was really nice to me at Rock and Shock this year. Uh, he kept calling me Steve all the weekend, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but he's a really nice guy. So he kept calling like, you Steve all weekend. Yeah, he did. But That's this funny. is a really bad movie. <laughs> but wait, so wait, but John Russo, like aside from Night of the Living Dead itself, the only other movie that I know of by John Russo is this movie called Midnight. I don't know if you're familiar. I've never with seen Mid- that. Midnight's actually pretty cool. Hmm. It, I actually read a there was a book. It's based on a book, and the book was way better than actually the movie. But it's this book. This um. Uh, Wait, oh, is it, are they remaking it? This is Midnight in pre-production. Yeah, because John, Ru- John Russo wrote a novel, Midnight. Hmm. I mean, look at this poster. This just looks cool. I think it's kind of hard to see, but it was from the 80s. Um, that's the only other movie I know that he made other side that, aside from that movie that he did not that long. Was it him? No, it was Bill Heinzman did. Oh, that, 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 that Flesh Eater? Flesh Eater. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, that was, that's fun. It's, it's, a fun, fun it's a fun movie to watch. I've yeah. seen it, yeah. But, um, yeah, as a director, what did he direct? Um... The Booby Hatch, he, Midnight, <laughs> Heartstopper, Scream Queen Swimsuit Sensations, oh, hey. Zombie Jamboree, there we go, Midnight 2, which I've seen, which isn't so bad, it's shot on video totally, Santa Scream Queen's Naked Christmas which, documentary. Which <laughs> That's a documentary? <laughs> that's basically the, the girls the, the girl scenes from Santa Claus with the, the oh, movie, it is? The movie okay. taken out. All right, all right. And there's that Night of the Living Dead, that 30th anniversary edition. Remember that thing? I do. Where they added extra footage is yeah, horrible, it's, horrible. Yeah. Like, it's, I don't know. And um, that's basically, yeah, I mean, a couple of other little random shit, but yeah. John Russo hasn't done too much, I guess. But, I mean, hey, he was involved in one of the greatest horror movies of all time. He was. A major influence. Night of the Living Dead, so you got to give him that. Yeah, and Return of the Living Dead. And Santa Claus. Give him credit for that. Santa Claus. <laughs> he brought us Debbie Rashawn's body. <laughs> all right, uh, let's see. I, I don't know. I, I think I'm drawing a blank here. I don't know. Do you have any? About, There's so many. It's uh, like... The more recent uh, Rare Exports. I have not seen Rare Exports. How okay. is it? Uh, it's, I it's, hear it's a good movie. It's quality. Yeah, actually, one of my friends just put it on my Facebook wall and reminded me of it Yeah. Uh, the other day. And yeah, I I, uh, I do enjoy that movie quite a Rare bit. Rare Exports is 2010. And that yeah. was a, um, I want to say it was like a German movie or something? It, or? it was a foreign oh. film. Oh, uh, um, that sounds Swedish, Hellander. Jellamari Hellander. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's but probably... yeah, it, it's, it was, um, you know, it's subtitled, but it's it's a, a quality film. Cool. Um, a Troll Hunter. I was like, the same guy who made Troll Hunter. It might be. I don't know. Oh, that was a good movie, too. I haven't seen Troll Hunter either. Um, but um, I heard about Rare Exports. Actually, I used to see it, like, when it first came out, it used to be, like, the, the Blu ray, you used to be able to find it in, like, Best Buy. And it was always there. But it was just one of those movies that was on the shelf, and I'm like, what is this freaking movie? And I never bothered to see it. But It's, it's definitely worth seeing. It's a very interesting twist on the whole Santa Claus uh, okay. mythos. Okay. Cool. Cool, yeah. cool. Awesome. All right. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I really am drawing a blank here. I'm sure we're missing a ton. We're missing a ton of stuff, but man, we've covered a ton of stuff we too. Did. So, we did. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. And uh, this is uh, Roadkill Entertainment. Uh, anything else you want to say, Mike? Or? Uh, yeah, please, please watch our movie. Yeah, watch our movie. You better watch out. It's perfect for this time it of is. year. This is, this is the time of year to watch our movie. That's so good. check it out. It's at... Uh, <laughs> jburn75.wix.com slash roadkill entertainment or you can get it also on youtube it was on youtube actually if you, if you went to youtube and you literally typed in uh, the hashtag symbol road r-e-y-b-w-o literally is like the, the first thing that comes up i did that on purpose so that it would be really easy to find roadkill entertainment you better watch out r-e-y-b-w-o and it comes right up it's easy to find um and it's free and it's complete and uncut and there's nothing this is it's the movie that we made so and it's in hd to be honest with you actually you can watch the movie if you don't if you only owned it on dvd you can actually watch it in better quality <laughs> on youtube which is funny because it's actually in hd on youtube but um yeah all right so that's it i, I hope you enjoyed this uh christmas episode and like merry christmas from all of us at roadkill entertainment and um we should be back in january for something else we haven't figured out what it's going to be yet but i'm sure it'll be something interesting um all right um merry christmas take it easy and uh we'll see you next time Till the ocean coast was in my sight